Let's go. Hey, what is going on guys? It is me, the Ninja Reviewer, and it's that wonderful time of the week once again, you guys. And this review, I promise you, is not going to be really the longest because, as you can see from there and there, um, you know, from work, I apologize if I didn't review the episode yesterday, you guys. I should have, but, um, I don't know. There was just, like, a lot of things I was just, like, doing, like, with my spare time. So, really, I didn't get a chance to watch the episode until, like, later during that night. So... Yeah, so I finally caught up to it, and I know I couldn't do it on the traditional JoJo Fridays, but, you know, it was still fine enough, so, anyways, it's time again for Diamond is Unbreakable, episode number 13, and this one is, uh, uh, yeah, we picked up something, what was it, crazy, I think the episode was called, yeah, uh, oh man. They did alright, oh my god. So it's a very simple concept. And this episode was a good way to bond, I would say, Josuke and his father Joseph. And no matter how old Joseph is, he is still fucking awesome. I am so glad that Joseph didn't completely lose his touch. I am completely glad. Did you see the fucking hermit purple thing with the fucking horn? Oh my god, yes. I'm telling you, he still is rocking the fucking purple hermit. He is still, I think he still has the Hoimon too. He actually still has a bit of the Hoimon. I actually did see it. I'm like, oh, that is fucking boss. Okay, so Joseph Joestar did not lose his touch. And I, no matter how old he is, he's still rocking the fucking Hoimon and the goddamn hermit purple. Boss, man. Oh my god. Joseph, you will always still be the best Joestar. Even though, yeah, it does kind of suck that you are pretty much, you know, old. But that doesn't mean nothing. I mean, hey, he was kind of, well, I mean, he was sort of old too back in Stardust Crusaders. But he wasn't really that old. He was still kind of, like, young. And he still was really Lobato, which is weird because he was, like, what, like, 60-something? But more importantly, though, that was actually really cool, though, that, uh, oh, man, like, so boss, like, oh my god, I just, I, I love fucking Joseph's ripples, man. So basically this episode is really crazy, noisy, bizarre town. See what I did there? <laughs> Anyways, so they pick up an invisible baby, which is pretty much, I, I believe, it's probably a stand, is my guess. It's probably a stand, which is my possible guess. It could be, or the baby user is a stand user itself, or the baby is its stand itself. My guess is that the baby is a stand, but I'm not to, I believe that's what it is. I think the baby is a stand, I don't think it's a stand user. So in my personal opinion, it's the stand, but the question is, we don't know who the stand user um, really is, though. Like, we don't really know, we haven't found out any details, it turns out at the end that Joseph is pretty much taking care of it. No, on his own. Um, so we see that they picked up this baby that's invisible. Joseph pretty much knew it from the start. And it's like, oh man. He noticed that, and then when he used the Hoimon and the Purple Hermit, that was dope as hell. Found out that the baby is invisible. And they didn't know if it was actually a person or just some enemy stand user, but no, it was just like a normal stand that's like an invisible baby. And what's even weirder is that when Joseph kept doing whatever it was, like touching it or whatever, when he kept touching it, for some reason, the more he actually bonded with the baby by actually giving her makeup and all that stuff, which was kind of funny because it's like, uh, oh, that's how you can tell if it's a boy or a girl. You gotta look between the legs. And it's like, oh my god. It's like, oh, Joseph, what the hell? But I do understand, though, he couldn't really see, so it wasn't really his fault because she was an invisible baby. So what happens is they want to take care of it for a while because they don't know who the owner is, you know, who the stand user is, etc. So, Joseph and them were pretty much taking care of it. We're seeing by a whole bunch, a whole bunch of baby shit that costs like so much amount of money, pretty much close of half of Joseph K's life savings. And I really did like at the very end of the episode where his credit card, his fucking bill comes in and he's seeing all these goddamn products and it's like, oh man, he was extremely pissed. I would be too. Well, what I mean is by, like, actually finding the baby and actually, like, where it actually went to. What I liked about the episode, though, was the way it ended off 
where Joseph pretty much is like, okay, we can't find the baby, but Joseph is really pissed off because he's worried himself because it is just an infant after all. Because like, oh, it's all your fault, you stupid old man, you should have paid attention. And it's like, Joseph, do you not know who the fuck you're talking to? You're, I mean, don't get me wrong, Joseph, I love you, but come on, you're talking to the dude that is rocking Hormone and fucking Purple Hermit and is still rocking it. Dude, he is actually not as senile as people think. I'm telling you, he is actually, you know, making it seem that he's senile, but he's really not. It's pretty much that, um, it's really just not the, uh, not the case. Because Joseph Joestar even said, you know, no matter how old I get, I'm still pretty much, you know, no matter how old I get, I still, you know, pretty much got it. I still have that sense of, of fighting instinct and whatever. You know, just like those old Japanese, you know, fucking old masters and shit. Except that he's American, but still. Regardless, though, I mean, still, he still got it. We still see him walking, not that much without his cane, which I actually thought was kind of weird. So I'm assuming this probably means is that he's not really the one to be so-called old as we thought. Like, yeah, he is old, but he's not like the typical old man that we, we thought. We really thought that he really couldn't fight or do anything anymore. But no, he could still use his stand. He can actually still use hormone, which is actually pretty intense. And we see him getting active. And let's not forget the classic trademark of, oh my god! Like, that was cool. And I'm like, yay! I'm like, all right, we're back to that now. Okay, um, I'm, I'm, start I'm starting to really feel him now again. And especially the way he was getting more active. And like, again, he may be old, but the thing is, he may be old, but... He actually uh, can still, you know, he can still fight in a way. He can still be useful and he can still sort of fight. Not as much, but he can still sort of fight. You know, you don't fuck with Joseph Joestar, no matter how old he is. Just saying. He's a fucking legend. He's a legend, bro. He's a legend. So that's really it for the episode. Uh, overall, the episode, um, it was, you know, it, when it comes to the pacing of the episode, it was just one, two, three. Like, the episode just had one little arc of this and it already ended. Because there was no two-parter, so I know this was going to end in, like, one episode. I really did like, though, the ending of the episode where he was trying to act all cool um, for him by actually pretending to cut away his fucking arm off when in reality he only just gave himself a little cut trying to pretend that he was really trying to commit suicide shit like that. But in reality, though, he was just doing it to trap the blood. So then... So then that way... Um, he would be able to find the baby in the river, which was in the middle spot. So, when it comes to the episode, I really did like the whole bonding between Josuke and Joseph Joestar. So, eh, overall a good episode. I still enjoyed it. It was wacky. It was shenanigans, you know, as finest. With all these fucking baby products and shit. And I'm like, oh my god, like, oh my god. All these weird, ridiculous baby products that, you know, for their baby. Like, this guy is a fucking baby expert. Like, goddamn. Not Joseph, but the dude that, you know, he was selling it to, and etc. So, that's pretty much it. So, overall, a good episode. I still enjoyed it. It was a good way to finally get the awesome bond between Josuke and Joseph, which father and son. So, that's really good. Even though he still won't really call him father, Joseph, yet, he still is calling him Mr. Joe Stark. So, yeah. So, that's technically it. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below of this episode. I know this episode review was a bit shorter, but really, that's pretty much it. It was a very simple wacky episode, kind of like the whole, uh, fucking, you know, the chef boiled e, e, you know, mom spaghetti, you know, the Italian restaurant shit, but except, not really intense though, this wasn't really the most intense episode, that was more intense for a regular slice of life, but this was just plain slice of life, just saying, so I'm done, that's it, uh, I'll see you guys next week for episode 14, which I heard is a lot of hype, which I heard this part is actually really good with the manga cut thing, and I, um, speaking of manga, oh, one more thing, I did like how they had the little Shueisha thing, um, Shueisha, where it's like handing out like the latest, um, your latest creativity of the writing of the new product of the new manga they're gonna sell. That was actually really cool. That was a nice touch. Especially it's showcasing that hey, this is a shonen jump manga based on the series, so it makes sense. So that's it, I'm done. So this is the Ninja Reviewer saying peace, soul, love, chicken grease, and the sky is the limit. And hope you drink your daily juice of moose milk, bitches. Signing out, and I'll see you guys next week for episode 14. And it's gonna be a part one, part two thing, so we know it's gonna be some crazy shit, like always, because JoJo is good with crazy shit. So, I am done. Don't know because I never read the manga. So, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.